Hey guys, Simcolor here, and today we are going to learn how we can populate the recycler view that we created in the last lesson, and we are going to populate it with contacts that we have on our contact list. So the first thing that we need is to open up Android Studio, obviously, and this is where we left off in the last lesson in the Find User activity. But we are going to simply close that and come into here and click Main Page Activity. Okay. And the reason why I'm coming here is because we will be needing to add permissions um, to get the contact list, especially uh, read contacts and write contacts. Or rather yet, especially read contacts, we won't be writing contacts, but I'm going to add everything anyway. And yeah, so let's come in here and say get permissions. Let's create that, click alt create method get permissions and let's say request permission oops that's not what I wanted at all let's say request permission there we go in the bottom requires no request <laughs> request permissions there we go okay new string Open up a couple of these brackets, another set of them, and let's say manifest dot permission dot um, and it isn't okay. Let's check, and it this is because we must import something, but it isn't importing it right away, which is a bit strange. So let's go up top and say import. How does it go? Android dot manifest. And now we should be able to import everything. Let me close that down. Now let's say permission dot. Okay, there we go. Write contacts, comma, manifest, manifest dot permission dot read contacts okay and it is underlined and that's for a reason is because we oh, sorry okay we must surround it with this if okay otherwise it won't work because this permission is only required for android versions above the match marshmallow okay and we forgot one argument here, which is the request code, but we don't care about the request code because we aren't going to do anything with it. So in this case, I'll just set it to one. Okay, it should be working. Now let's go into the manifest file. And let's simply come in here up top and say, uses permission, read contacts. It is a self-closing object so let's do it like that and write contacts okay so that's it now we are able to finally write some code to find the contact list so let's say private void get contact list and to do uh, to get the contact list we'll need First of all, a cursor that will simply go through every single contact that we have. And it is literally a cursor. So it's called cursor phones equals to get content resolver dot query contacts contract dot common data kinds dot phone and it is a lot of code but you'll see it working in a second so don't worry content uri and now we have to set a couple of uh, variables to null so null 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 and null because we are able to set 
as you can see, a sort order and things like that, but I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. Okay, now we are going to make a loop to force the, the cursor to move from one contact to another, to another, to another, to another, and so on and so forth. So let's simply say while phones dot has uh, moved to next, so while the, the cursor is able to move forward, then we simply get the string of the current phone that we are in and uh, get the name and the phone. Okay, as simple as that. So string name equals to phones dot get string phones dot get column index contacts contract common data kinds dot phone dot display name okay and this will get us the name of the cur the, the current position of the cursor and now we do the same but for the phone number and number but actually I'm going to call it I don't can't remember what I called the object. Let me just go in here. Okay, I call it phone, so I'm going to leave it phone in here. And now all we have to do is to create an object with both the name and the phone and add it to the list. Just that we don't need to do anything else. So let's do if uh, not an if we first need to create the object. So user object and contact equals to new user object name and phone okay now we are going to simply say contact list uh, variant user list dot add and contact and now we are because we added a something to the user list doesn't mean that it will appear automatically in the recycler view and the reason is because you must tell the recycler view or better yet the adapter that something changed and so that the adapter must go look again through the user list to see what has changed okay and to do that it simply is really easy let's simply say and user list adapter dot notify data set changed Okay, that's it. We don't need to do anything else. Let's just call this function right here. And yeah, let's run the app to see if everything checks out. Okay, so the app finished loading. It is right here. Uh, but as you can see, I'm in the emulator. And I'm going to show you how you can test things in the emulator. Because, uh, well, it, you can't move on through in the login screen because the emulator doesn't have a, a number and it doesn't work if you use your number in here. So the way you can fix this is to go into the authentication in your Firebase dashboard, click sign in method, go into phone and click on the phone numbers for testing. And I'm going to add, simply add a phone number in here. I don't really care what it is. Add. Okay, and now I have this phone number that I can use in my emulators. So I'm going to simply close that up and say in here it was 1 plus 10 1, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And the code will be 111 111. Send verification code, verify code, and it should log in. Let's give it just a second. 111. Oh, it has one more one than, than needed. Okay, there we go. And now, as you can see, this pop up appeared asking us for permission. So I'm going to allow it and I'm going to click find user. And test one and test two appear with these phone's numbers. So ones and twos. So let's go into my contact list to see if that's the case. And there we go, test one. This one and test two has twos. 
So it is working. Now the only thing that's missing is that nothing guarantees me that these numbers are using WhatsApp at the moment. So that's the next thing that we have to check uh, in order to complete this part of the WhatsApp clone app. Okay, so I'll leave this to the next lesson. And But yeah, apart from that, everything should be working. And if you have any questions, then go into the forums. I have a, a forum board just for, for WhatsApp. And yeah, that's it. If this is being helpful to you, then leave a like, subscribe. That's all for today. I hope to see you again tomorrow and ciao. Oh, yeah.